If you are interested in taking the FE exam, the civil section, or you are about to retake this test, then this video is for you. Today in this video, I'm going to be going through a concept that you must be able to master in order to pass this FE, and that's going to be the probability and statistics section of this exam. Now, there are about eight to 10 questions, eight to 12 questions that will be asked on the mathematics and statistics portion of the test. And today we're going to specifically be talking about statistics. Now, if you want to go through every single concept so that you ensure that you pass your FE exam, then you're going to want to make sure that you subscribe to the channel because I make videos on every single concept. That way, there's no question. The exam is easy for you. All right, so enough of the intro. Let's get straight into this. I'm going to minimize myself just enough. Um, so the important thing about uh, for the, for this exam is knowing what to study. And as I mentioned before, we're going to be going through the mathematics and statistics section, specifically the statistics. And in this section, they may ask things about distributions, mean, mode, standard deviation, confidence interval, regression, and curve fittings. And if you're like me, I don't remember what any of this stuff uh, was. Um, but the cool thing is, is that with practice, you'll be able to familiarize yourself with the FE handbook. For those of you don't, who don't know where I'm getting this uh, from this is in the FE handbook scroll all the way down to the bottom and go to civil specifications you need to you need need to tap in with this all right so have a practice problem for you all um, it's in this top right corner hopefully you can see uh, our first question is you want to rent an unfurnished one bedroom apartment in Durham all right North Carolina which is where I'm from next year the mean uh, monthly rent for a random sample of 60 apartments uh, advertised on Craigslist, we all know what Craigslist is, is $1,000. Assume a population standard deviation of $200. Construct a 95% confidence interval. Now, uh, just being honest, every time I attack any question on this exam, and this is crucial, you need to ask yourself, um, can I use any formula in this uh, FE handbook to help me out here? We're, we're, we're being asked to construct a 95 cent confidence interval. So I don't really remember what confidence interval is. I see that they give me a mean, they give me a standard deviation, and they give me uh, a number of apartments, which is 60. Okay. So being that I know that, I'm just going to come to my FE manual. We're going to type, uh, as you can see, I've already kind of done this, but this is for your practice. So feel free at any time to attack this problem on your own. Pause it and check uh, with me as I go step by step through this. So confidence interval. All right. And we see that I'm going to zoom in just a tad. Hopefully you can see this confidence interval. I see 10 different sections. So of course, confidence interval comes up there. We're going to hit next confidence interval for in intercept. I uh, don't think that's what I need. Um, confidence interval for slope. I don't see too much on that. Confidence interval for mean uh, standard deviation is known. Okay. I do know my standard deviation. Uh, and just by gauging, now we're going to take a look and see, okay, this, this problem looks like it can help us some, right? But this is because I'm familiar with it. So if you're not familiar with it, get familiar with uh, your, your handbook. It's going to be very helpful for you. So, all right. So now I have a formula, right? And, and it's super crucial for you to know, you know, what some of this stuff is, right? And 
what is some of this stuff? Like, what is X bar? What is Z? What is that symbol? And what is N, all right? So I'm gonna write down, first step, I got a formula. So as you can see, I have my formula here. And then I start writing down what I know. So if you're not familiar with these symbols, get familiar with the symbols. X bar is your uh, mean, right? Z is like your uh, distribution. And so I know my, uh, from the problem, uh, my mean is a thousand, my Z is uh, something for, you know, I don't, I don't know my Z up front. So you see 1.96 there, but I'll explain where I'm getting that from. So you have your Z, all right. We know our uh, standard deviation, all right, which is 200 from the problem. And we know our N, which is 60. So we just wrote out that list. Now, let's go to this Z because, you know, this is very crucial um, when it comes to intervals. So, and I don't know if I did a decent job explaining this formula, but all it's saying is that our distribution, uh, basically the formula to get uh, your confidence interval is going to be between two different points, two different levels. You're gonna have a high mean and you're gonna have a lower mean. And so that's gonna be, we're trying to find the 95, we're trying to be 95% confident with the, the means for this. So if we scroll down, right, because we don't really, just gonna look to see what Z is. And if you don't know what any of this stuff is, standard normal Z, um, you see the symbols, it gives you standard deviation, everything X bar, hypothesized mean. So if I didn't explain that well, then you have it right here, all right? So it says in our from our problem, all right, it says we're looking to construct a 95% confidence interval. So uh, we it gives us it gives us our values of Z, um, I can say that's A divided by two, Z A, Okay, what does that mean? Z, whatever that symbol is, corresponds to the appropriate probability under the normal probability curve. Okay, so we are looking for 95%. We see it here, and at 95% it equals 1.96. So now we know Z. Okay, so that's how I'm able to write down 1.96. All right, so uh, here's our interval for the lower side. So we're gonna take our mean minus this Z distribution uh, times our standard deviation divided by the square root of N, right? So we have all our values for the lower side. We have all our values for the higher side. And now we're gonna solve for this confidence interval. So again, we simply got our formula from here, our confidence interval, because that's what we're solving for. Um, and our standard deviation is known. All the values in the problem give us what we need to solve this confidence interval. So we're just gonna solve it. All right, so you just plug and chug from there. And I write this out for you, clear. All right. So we're gonna start with um, our mean, which is 1000, minus the 1.96, which is Z, times our uh, standard deviation of a 200, divide that by the square root of 60. And that ends up giving us uh, 949.39. So that's our lower end of our mean, all right, of the 95% confidence interval. All right, and so we're gonna plug and chug again for our upper. And we do the same thing, and it gives us our upper value. All right, which is 1,050.61. So we're 95% uh, confident 
that our uh, mean is going to be between 949.39 and 1050 for those 60 different apartments that are being advertised on Craigslist. So hopefully this made sense to you. Um, I know that it's very uh, a bit complex, but what we, all we did is we checked to see what what the problem was asking for. It's asking for uh, the confidence interval. So then our FE handbook tells us exactly what a confidence interval is um, based on what we were given. Right? And yeah, for the mean. And we were given uh, all the numbers that we needed. The important thing here is knowing what these different symbols mean and your FE handbook states that but you have to be able to do this stuff quick like you have to be familiar with what the mean what these symbols look like right so if you struggle with this um, it is okay um, you will get more confident with practice so that was the first problem we're going to jump into the second problem and Hopefully you can see this. All right. So given that SX is equal to 2,500 and uh, SYY is equal to 3,750, uh, SXY is equal to 500 and N equals six, the standard error of estimate is what? All right. All right. So again, this is a bunch of nonsense to me. Like I know in, in civil engineering, like I've taken, I've taken this test three times now and I have not really used this information this much at all, but that's besides the point, right? We need to pass this exam so that we can make more money so that we can have the credentials to be able to get our professional license. So we got to play the game, right? And for those of you who love statistics, probably not watching this video. All right, so I don't know what the standard error of estimate is, but let's see if my handbook does. Let's see if it knows. All right, so uh, I'm just gonna type in, hopefully you guys can see in my thing. I'm probably not doing a good job of this. So. Uh, I don't know if it actually zooms into for you to see me search, but I'm gonna, uh, tell you what I'm searching. So a standard error. All right. I'll just do that. It looks like two things come up. Standard error of estimate says it's on page 69. Huh? And standard error of estimate is it comes right up. So we are going to use this formula this very formula, hopefully you guys can see it, uh, SE squared. Okay, so standard error of estimate equals SE squared. All right, so SE is our standard error of estimate. So uh, SE squared is equal to SXX times SYY minus SXY squared all over SXX times n minus two. Okay, this is good stuff, right? Uh, let's see what we were given. We're gonna write, our, write out our givens. So please pause the video at any time and go ahead and you do this. So first, finding the formula. Next, writing out your givens. Okay. I got my S X X. I got my S Y Y. Uh, I got my S X Y and I got my N. Okay. So then we start solving, All right? We're just using this formula, plugging and chugging. And we do, we do the plug and chug 2,500 times 3,750, right? Minus 500 squared all over 
2,500 minus, I meant multiplied by my n minus two, which is six, right? Six minus two. Okay. Now, once we put that in our calculator, it's going to bring us to, uh, let's, we're going to get 912. Our SE squared equals 912.5. And after that, uh, we're not going to stop there. We're going to go ahead and solve for SE. So we got SE squared, but we're going to solve uh, and go ahead and take the square root of that number to get our actual SE. And uh, once you take the square root of 912.5, uh, you're going to get 30.207. So I hand wrote all this stuff out um, just to make sure that um, you guys could kind of follow along and go step by step. Um, so my answer was 30.207. And from this multiple choice, you're going to get 30.207. So, and they even bring it out a little bit further. So hopefully this information was helpful for you. Um, like I said, I'm going to be going through every single concept that is in the civil section. So I have currently already went through, and I'm just gonna scroll down to the bottom. Yeah, so if you're finding value from this stuff, please uh, like it, let YouTube know that it's helpful. Um, I promise you no one's doing like practice problems like this because they're like they may do a general but they're not focusing in on each concept and i've taken this test three times and on the third try i passed so uh i wanted to make sure that hopefully it doesn't take you that many times but i'm a little slow so it took me a little bit longer um but it's all good so yeah so yeah i've gone through analytic geometry a single variable calculus, vector operations. And today we went through statistics. So make sure you add this, uh, subscribe to the channel, go ahead and subscribe so that you can late at night or whenever you have free time, just practice along with me. And if nothing else, um, you are you begin getting familiar. So uh, also don't forget to check the description uh, down below because I will have plenty of resources like uh, your FE handbooks. I will have uh, practice tests. I will have just typical checklists that you may need. I have a bunch of different things that you need to make sure you check out so that you take this test once or after you've seen these videos, you don't have to take this exam again. Um, hopefully this was helpful for you. Um, in the next video, I'll be going over uh, ethics and professional practice. Yes, this is a small portion of the exam, and um, it's important that you get as many as you can correct. So be sure to check out that video, and I'll see y'all in the next one. Peace.